A long, long time ago, Remedy stated that if they had been the ones behind the development of Max Payne 3, they would have done things differently. How differently? Well, it's hard to say. They never really spoke about what exactly they had in mind, if they had anything in mind. We know more about Rockstar's original plans for Max Payne 3 that had the game set in Russia instead of Brazil, but neither Sam Lake nor anybody at Remedy really talked about where they would have taken the story next after Max Payne 2's ending. But thanks to Scott Miller, the founder of 3D Realms, who helped Remedy with development and publishing of Max Payne 1 and 2, we know a little bit more about what Remedy's plans were for subsequent sequels of Max Payne. And yes, that's right, sequels. Plural. They envisioned Max Payne not as a trilogy, but as a quadrilogy, with an overarching story that would take place over four games. So that means we would have gotten a Max Payne 3 and a Max Payne 4. It's pretty funny to learn about this, since I've seen a lot of people saying that they would like to see a fourth Max Payne. Every time I saw that, I thought, eh, it doesn't need to happen. The Max Payne 3 that we got literally ended with Max walking off into a sunset, and he's on a nice, clean, calm beach. He looks and sounds relaxed, content with how things are, he's not drinking alcohol anymore. He's basically got the rest of his life ahead of him to figure out what to do. And as long as he doesn't go back to New Jersey while the DeMarcos are still around, then he should be okay. But then this is the Max Payne 3 that we got, a game that was probably being made without any future installments in mind. After all, Rockstar kept putting it off for a while, and development was very difficult from what I've heard. They also probably figured that the game was not going to be a huge title either, which sucks, and that's exactly what ended up happening. Compared to other Rockstar titles, it really did not sell well, and Take-Two were not pleased with its performance. But according to Scott Miller, if Remedy and 3D Realms had continued with Max Payne instead of them selling it off to Rockstar, first they would have taken things in a very different direction. That is obvious. Sam Lake's writing style is a lot different from Dan Hauser's writing. Dan Hauser's Max Payne 3 felt more like an action blockbuster, complete with one-liners and a pal for the protagonist to joke with or protect. Sam Lake's Max Payne was like an action movie too, but one with much more mystique to it. There's almost a supernatural element at times, and it can be very moody. Max is also quite a wordsmith, and he certainly loved metaphors back then. Both games are also set across New York. Max Payne 3 only featured a few missions set in New Jersey, right across from New York, but not exactly New York. But Miller says that Remedy never planned on taking Max out of New York. The only change they would have made to the setting would be the season. Max Payne 1 was set in the wintertime in the middle of a blizzard. Max Payne 2 was set in the fall in the middle of a very rainy week. Funny thing, he actually mentions that the subtitle, The Fall of Max Payne, has a double meaning to it. It's not just Max's figurative and eventually literal fall, but the game itself is set in the fall. But going by that, I'm going to assume that Max Payne 3's subtitle wasn't going to be Max Springs Forward, and then we would have gotten Max Payne 4 the Summer of Max afterwards. But spring and summer are when these would have been set. I wonder if the weather would have also been similarly bad. Maybe more rain for the spring. April showers and all that. And as for the summer, how about a heat wave? No more precipitation, just 100 degree temperatures during the daytime in New York. The smell of cigarettes and garbage in the air, and Max hopefully without a leather jacket. Then again, he did wear that thing open with just a button up and a t-shirt under it in the middle of a friggin' blizzard, so besides nearly freezing to death, maybe he's also keen on roasting too. Although I would have liked to have seen him shed the leather for maybe whatever that shirt is he's got underneath. It looks pretty cool actually, I have a similar one myself. But besides superficial things like the environments and character models, where would they have even taken the story with these two extra games? By the end of Max Payne 2, Max is basically wanted by his own police department for shooting a fellow detective and then getting involved with a killer. Among all the bodies found around him include the killer in question, a Russian mob boss, and a United States Senator. Needless to say, he'd be in quite the sticky situation. But where could they have gone with that next? I don't think they would make a game where you're playing as Max just sitting there giving a 10-hour deposition about what the hell happened. Miller never said exactly what Remedy and Sam Lake had planned next for Max, and given that he said that after a combined six years of working on the first two games, the studio were pretty tired of working on Max Payne by that point. They wanted to do something new before going back to Max. So for all we know, they might not have even had any solid ideas down. 
But it's always fun to imagine where things could have gone had they turned out differently. Sam Lake did co-write the Max Payne graphic novel released in the lead-up to the third game's release. According to this, not long after the second game ended, Max was officially fired from the NYPD. There was basically too much controversy surrounding him after what happened over the past few weeks to allow him to continue being there, since the public was well aware that he was involved in these really crazy circumstances. And despite being the protagonist of our game, he's not exactly seen as the hero by the public. But where the graphic novel takes us after that is to Max doing nothing for nine years besides watching TV and binge drinking. Maybe Max still could have done this for a few years. If Remedy were intent on doing Alan Wake first, then maybe their version of Max Payne 3 could have still come around the same time as it did, and we would have gotten that in Max Payne 4 instead of Quantum Break. If Max had to stay in New York, maybe the story could have still featured him doing private security work, and possibly uncovering some kind of vast conspiracy. I was thinking maybe some kind of corrupt squad within the NYPD might want him dead for some reason. Or maybe there were more cops than Winterson who were involved in feeding information about cases to organized crime figureheads. But then that's also kind of something they already did, and, you know, they would want to be a little more creative, I guess. Maybe they would just do something so incredibly different that it would be hard to guess exactly what they'd do. He was a detective turned DEA agent in the first game. He went rogue after going undercover and waged a personal war against every Sopranos reject he could find. And after winding up on the rooftop of a major corporation's building after killing their CEO in a very spectacular fashion, he still got his job back in the NYPD thanks to Senator Woden pulling a few strings. Now even though Woden dies by the end of the second game, maybe through some miracle of writing, Max winds up working for the FBI due to his expert knowledge on organized crime and militias. I mean, he shot probably hundreds of them, he's gotta know something about them. Miller had an even better idea, though. When someone asked him where he would have liked to have seen the story go, he threw out the idea of returning to the government conspiracy angle that the first game had, and this time having Max being hunted down by the military. Remember, he did stumble upon a pretty big black ops project in the first game, so it makes sense that they would want Max gone. He did see documents that detailed the government's involvement in the Valkyr crisis, and too much of the bunker that they had, and thanks to him sneaking in there, it got blown up. The Pentagon would probably not be too happy about that. I feel like had this been the idea that they had back then, and had Remedy and 3D Realms kept Max Payne, the game would have probably turned out being maybe a little similar to Splinter Cell Conviction, but without stealth. Although Remedy then sold Max Payne to Rockstar because Rockstar offered a ton of money. Even though the second game didn't sell as well as Remedy had hoped, Rockstar still saw potential in the franchise. And at least we got Max Payne 3, even though it turned out to be the last we would ever see of Max. Until the near future, perhaps. Hey, imagine if those Max Payne remakes actually did so well that they decided to do another new Max title after all. Maybe a prequel or something, since if they kept the third game as canon, I still believe Max would have officially retired from anything that would bring violence to him. I wonder how the production on the remakes has been doing, too. It's been nearly a year since those were announced, and we don't know anything else about them besides the fact that Rockstar are paying for it. Remedy have almost finished development on Alan Wake 2, which is due for release this year. They've since announced that Control 2 is now in production. I would have thought for sure that Max Payne was going to be their next project after Alan Wake, but then they also said that they are planning on releasing games in a much quicker succession than what they've done previously. That's surprising since they're not exactly a huge studio. I just hope Max's eventual return turns out to be awesome enough to bring this franchise back, or at least make it more popular again and give it the love it deserves. Anywho, what are your thoughts? Would you have liked to have seen Remedy hold on to Max Payne and maybe make the third and fourth game on their own? How do you think they would have turned out compared to Rockstar's Max Payne 3? And what do you want to see next for this franchise in the future? Do you actually want to see Max make a comeback with a brand new fully fledged game? Or are you satisfied with the remakes that are in production? Whatever your thoughts are, let me know. Thank you for watching.